some weeks ago, I found these K40, 40, 40 watt CO2 lasers online and I thought I just had to give one a try. These are found around 300 US dollars, so the pricing is pretty incredible. They do require some minor modifications to get them to be really usable and in this video, I'll show you all the things I did to mine. This is how mine arrived, just fresh out of the box. Everything's sort of crammed inside them when you get them, but it does come with pretty much everything you need to get going, except a reservoir for your cooling system. In the description, I'll post a link to my GitHub where I'm storing all the files, links, reference material, everything I've learned about this laser. This is new to me, so it was a bit of a steep learning curve. As usual, I'll try to make that as easy as possible for you guys by linking everything. Now, also linked below is going to be the full video, all the raw footage that you're seeing here before editing. I post it up on my secondary channel. That way, any of the details on these modifications you can watch from start to finish uncut. It's a very long video. First on the agenda was get all the styrofoam packing material out of the laser. It was in everything, including the power supply. So, a little bit of cleanup. If you're a maker or electronics enthusiast, make sure you check out PCBWay. They can make any circuit board you desire, provide the parts, and even assemble the board for you. They now offer fully transparent tracking on your order so you can see where your project is at from start to finish. These lasers have the tube across the back side, reflects it with mirrors all the way to the gantry, and that's the basics of how they work. In my case, the laser tube, the glass tube, was not in the right position. It had moved during transport, possibly, so minor modifications there. Before I even started this laser, I removed the entire gantry assembly. This is to get at the ductwork in the back to get it out of there so that I can actually have some decent airflow through it. But also it served for me to check out the gantry, check out the steppers, make sure everything was in tip top shape. It truly was on mine. This is a piece of ductwork from the back. It's designed to pull the, the smoke away from the work surface, but it's way too restrictive. So I ended up just completely removing this. For my setup, I used a five gallon bucket for my sump to hold my coolant. In my case, I used automotive antifreeze coolant because it gets very cold here. And if it freezes and splits that laser tube, well, you're out of luck. I was actually up and engraving and cutting in about maybe an hour's worth of work with mine. That includes the initial modifications, so pretty happy. This is one other area of the cutter that has to be addressed. The airflow I got solved from the backside, but the problem is the front grates are still too small. They don't allow enough airflow into the laser cutter. So to get more airflow, I've propped the front open. Later, I replaced that screwdriver with just a couple of uh, furniture standoffs from Dollar Store just to hold the lid open just a little bit. Worked perfectly. My very first cut came out just fine, just dollar store materials, and sure enough, I was able to engrave my logo and cut it out. Worked beautifully. Next up, 3D printed the parts for the air assist nozzle. This nozzle allows you to hook shop air onto the print head or the cutter head and assist in the cutting itself. By removing the smoke and vapors, you get a much better, cleaner cut. To install this, it was just some parts from Amazon, regulator, some hose, some fittings from my local TSC. Basically, you just want to regulate your shop air down to something very low. In my case, it barely registers on the gauge. You're looking at maybe a pound or two at most. Works perfect. I decided to mount my regulator on the right hand side of the unit. It just worked out best for the hose routing. I didn't have uh, access to the proper materials, the proper sheet metal screws, so I ended up just using what I had on hand. It is a pandemic after all. I ended up riveting this on. I added a drag chain to mine. I just sourced this from Amazon. That way it keeps the tube up out of the way. If your airline was to get in the path of the laser, well, that would be the end of it in a, in a quick moment. This is probably the most useful modification to this cutter. It definitely changes the entire quality of work it's capable of. 
In my case, I had to remove the lid support. That way the gantry wouldn't hit it. This took me some time to figure out as it was crashing into it. Bad idea. I also had to move the light over into the lid as well. This turned out to be a nice little mod because now the light is even more over the work instead of tucked into the back. So should have been there the whole time. I removed that silly clamp assembly out of the center that nobody used and replaced it with this uh, aluminum plate I found at my local Rona. It's not perfect by any stretch. It should be much smaller and it should be vertical to direct the beam down in. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I was able to fasten it on using the original fasteners, the countersunk screws, and it works just wonderful. The tape around the outside is also graduated. The file is in my GitHub. That way you know where to place your work. And that is where we're at currently. I am super happy with this. Under 500 Canadian dollar 40 watt laser that just works. I've been cutting out these uh, face shields, these 3D printed face shields for the pandemic uh, every day non-stop it works perfect for those and as i mentioned at the beginning linked below is the entire build video of this in raw and uncut format that way you can see how to do any of these mods if you choose to buy one of these cutters honestly if you're in the market for a laser cutter i see nothing wrong with this thing it does require some work and some modifications but for the price point that is totally to be expected and the price to upgrade this this stuff is very reasonable. If you're in the market, I say go for it. I'll post the link down below to the Amazon sellers that I think uh, might be worth looking at. Also linked below will be some of the software I use. It's all in my GitHub and linked. I use Inkscape for the software to work with the SVGs, as you've probably already seen on my channel and other videos. And then I'm using K40 Whisper to control the laser cutter. I don't even use what comes with it. It comes with some hacked version of CorelDRAW and some other stuff. I didn't even pull them out of the envelope, to be honest, and just went with what I knew worked. It'd mean a lot to me if you clicked a thumbs up on this video if you watched it this far through. Join me on Patreon or become a channel member down below if you like these videos, if you like these projects. Cheers guys, good luck in all your projects.